Okay, so we've got things installed, if you have a Mac at least. Soon the Windows and Linux versions will be updated, so it will be much easier to install all three. Much, much easier, one hopes. Anyway, so let's explain now what Spoon is. Spoon is basically a way of communicating with images and um, sharing objects between them without having to share source code. So in this case we have the original Spoon image running, the one with this graphical interface. And then we have two other images. One is called the subject image. Yes. B. And one is called the history image. We'll call it H for history. And each of them is completely standalone. They have their own source code, their own class libraries, their own objects. But Within this image, the graphical one, that's supposed to be a G, we can do some interesting things. Let's uh, go back and open a browser. First, we have to establish a connection. So establish that connection again. Allow. Open a browser. There we have it. And if you recall, you can see that the, um, the browser for our graphical user interface image has far more classes than our browser for the uh, subject image, which is, run, which is connected through port 62982. See the difference in how many classes are in one and the other. So we can uh, see what our subject image is like by inspecting it. What we get is a reference to an other, that is to say a proxy. And that proxy has a remote session ID. So let's, let's grab a um, variable that refers directly to that remote session ID. We can just go through other all instances. Notice we have four of them, so let's inspect the first one. That's not it. Let's inspect the second one. That's it. Okay, so we're going to create a variable that refers to our uh, subject image. So we're going to just say proxy colon equals other instances second. And now we can do programming with it. But with, before we do programming, let's uh, find... I happen to know that other right now is referring to a wormhole. That is a, a specific kind of uh, object designed to communicate. So we see the um, the wormhole uh, class variables and, and methods and so on. We're going to add a new one. We're going to call it um, add2. That beep is annoying. I'll get rid of it in a second. And now we're going to return 2 plus 2. Save it. And notice, unlike usual in small talk, the uh, classes within our current image, notice there's no add to. There is one for wormhole in our GUI image, but we're looking at the class for um, the wormhole. We're looking at the wormhole class source objects, methods, whatever in our subject image and we have an add to method so we can actually go ahead and uh, execute with a little bit of a workspace code 
let's go proxy add to and print the result and sure enough it prints four so well remember this GUI image doesn't have the code it's only existing in our other image we have just created and compiled code that only exists in this other image it doesn't exist on our original image that we're looking at with a graphical interface so we're able to transfer executable objects from one to the other in real time and execute them on the other image and get a return value and that's basically one important part of what squeak or spoon allows you to do there's many other important parts but this is the only one i know how to use yet so there you have the the smallest possible example of what you could do with spoon you can start a remote image and execute code that was created on the fly for that remote image that doesn't exist in your original image. Pretty slick.